Hi guys, I'm Andrea and welcome to a new booktube video. So all my life I've been a pretty big book hoarder. I'm a person who buys books even if they're never going to read them and I'll collect them and they sit in a corner of my room forever. It's a hobby I guess in many ways, you know some people press flowers against pages and for me instead of pressing flowers I just collect the actual pages and then just have them there. There's something about having a physical book that just makes me so happy and I think a lot of other book lovers and booktubers can relate to this feeling hence why we make this why we make booktube channels in general but I wanted to talk today about books that I have that are kind of weird and I have no idea why I bought them or how they got to my room or how they got into my hands but they're kind of interwoven into my own life narrative that it feels wrong to get rid of them. So because I have this like weird um, interwoven feeling with them, a lot of these books I've had for over 10 years or a lot of books that I got when I was in elementary school and I think that just goes back to, you know, the joy of reading as a kid. There's some kind of kismet energy I think when you're a book lover as a child and then those books just hold a very dear special place in your heart. But with this specific pile of books I want to talk about today, I never read them, yet I still feel that same kind of kismet energy. So I thought I'd show them off a little bit and talk about them. Okay, so the first book I have is called The Encyclopedia of Macaws. I got this somewhere between the ages of like seven and eight, I think. I was in elementary school, like second or third grade, maybe. Um, and I don't know why, I don't know how I got this. I don't know if someone gave this to me or if I begged for it. Uh, it's a pretty old book, so I know it has to be from like a used bookstore or a garage sale. Um, and it's literally an encyclopedia of macaws. You have their behavior, you have um, how to purchase them, Accommodations. I think it's even breeding and like proper care. Yeah, you got all the different species of macaws. Oops. And this is a translated book. Um, I don't know why I have this. I literally don't know. And I never actually read it. But one thing I do really love about this book, now that I'm flipping through it, is that the pictures on here have like this high gloss on them, which I think is super cool actually. Um, but yeah, this book was written in the year or published in the year that I was born in 1995. So I literally have no real reason for having this. I used to want to be a vet, but um, I didn't want to deal with birds, so it's a little strange. The next book I want to talk about is another bird book. There's a trend here, which kind of surprises me because I was literally never into birds, hence why this is weird. And I can't get rid of these books because there, there must have been something eight-year-old me found so interesting about them that I can't figure out at this point that I'm hoping sometime in the future I will be able to figure out. So this is Birds of Prey. I got this at Big Lots, hence the Big Lots sticker, um, for five dollars. And it's literally Birds of Prey. I don't know when I got this book, but um, it has a bunch of Birds of Prey. I've never read it. I don't even recall a time I've ever flipped through these pages. But I was going through my bookshelf today and I found it. Um, yeah, I think the cover is really cool. And it says, From the mighty Andean condor, the largest flying creature in the world, to the sparrow-sized elf owl, discover the amazing variety of birds of prey that hunt across their skies. And I've literally never touched this book, so. The next book uh, looks quite common at first glance called Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes, illustrated by Hilda Offit. It looks like an unassuming children's book, doesn't it? But this has a wild story. Okay, so in the second grade, there is this boy who had a crush on me, and I was a little drama queen and diva, and when I found this out, I decided to completely ignore him for like ever. So in an effort to win my attention back, he gifted me this book because I was kind of known as a bookworm, um, which is actually pretty sweet if you think about it, but I wasn't thinking that back then. I wasn't. So he put two or three his family, and then this book was actually gifted to him by his grandmother, and he gave it to me. So I tried returning it to him many times because this was a gift to him, and he 
he kept saying no every single time. Uh, so yeah, and then some other classmates got wind of this whole back and forth book giving deal and they kind of were made fun of him by um, doing this. Oh shoot. So it says, I love Andrea, but she knows. And it has a little heart and it has him and it has me. And then it says, I love you. And then he wrote down here, I didn't write this. So this kind of became a classroom book in many senses because uh, it went on for like a month or two, this back and forth book giving. So I haven't gotten rid of this book. I feel bad though. I've, I've tried looking for this guy, giving me this back his book, but I haven't been able to find him. The next book is a holiday book and it also looks unassuming at first glance. It's called The Magic Gradle. I don't know how I got this. I'm not Jewish. I don't know. I don't have anybody in my family that's Jewish, but I have this book for some reason. And this is a personalized storybook. So this kid's parents so was created for Joshua Noah Weinberg and his parents made a personalized <coughs> story for him. Storybook about, um, you know, Hanukkah and the dreidel and all that kind of stuff. And it somehow ended up in my hands. They're from Milton, Florida, maybe. I don't know. And it's just a book about Hanukkah. If anybody knows Joshua Noah Weinberg, um, this book was given to him in 1990. I have your book, dude. If you want it back, um, just let me know. The next book I want to talk about is not that uncommon either, but I chose this because I have a lot of other books similar to this that I never actually read, but I always bought for some reason. And that is uh, Batman Begins, the junior novel. I literally have never read this one. I don't know why I have it. I just know it has cool pictures in the middle of it. Uh, Batman Begins isn't even my favorite one of the Dark Knight series. My favorite one is the Dark Knight. So, yeah. I have this book, R.L. Stein's Haunted Lighthouse. This is a book I got at SeaWorld in like 2003. Um, they used to have this ride where, or 4D, movie yeah and it would be about this haunted lighthouse so i don't know if the ride was based on the book or if the book was based off the ride but i have it and i literally have never touched it since i bought it but i can't get rid of it because it's connected to that sea world memory even though sea world is trash now i really enjoyed um visiting it for the first time you know and seeing like sea animals and all that kind of stuff the next book i want to talk about is a book i had an abraham lincoln face when i was in elementary school i don't know why but i did and out of that abraham lincoln phase uh i got this book which is the wit and wisdom of abraham lincoln edited by anthony gross the best stories by and about america's most beloved president um and again i've literally never read this book i just thought i had abraham lincoln on the cover i was going through an abraham lincoln phase and i got it and the last one i want to talk about is johnny texas by carol hoff and this book is from 1950 i think this is the first edition yeah it's the first edition so this book uh was given was a library book and then they discarded it how it ended up into my hand. hands and it's very much a book of its time it's about a boy from Germany who moves to the wild west and he just has the best time ever um, so yeah it's very much a, a book of its time if you understand where I'm going I've never read this book but I keep it because it's so old and I kind of like this like weird fabric cover um, so yeah those are just some books I own that I've never read and I don't plan on getting rid of anytime in the near future and there's just something in me that just says no and you know I'll get rid of everything else before I'll get rid of my books and so yeah this has happened to you guys can you not get rid of your books either or books that you got when you were super young um, for me it's easier to get rid of well-loved chapter books I guess books that I bought when I was older than books that I got when I was a kid like this uh, so yeah let me guys let me know in the comments below and i'll see you guys next time bye